NFL vet Bryant McKinney recently returned from a humanitarian trip to Africa. On the flip side, he sits down with me to talk about his mission, his experience, and how it changed his life. I'm here with Bryant McKinney, who just came back from a very special overseas trip. Tell me, where did you go? What were you doing? Well, we went to Gulu, Uganda, and then Kigali, Rwanda. Um, it was a missionary trip um, put together by Pros for Athletes. Pros for Athletes is an organization that was based in Oklahoma. The purpose of the trip is to do missionary work. Like while we were there, we did Feed the Children. We did, um, we passed our hearing aids uh, provided by Starkey Hearing Aid Company. Um, we dug wells, you know, for water and everything. Uh, build a foundation for schools. I mean, we did a lot. Start off by telling me how did you get involved and who were the guys that specifically went with you on this trip? Um, Adrian Peterson is actually the person who got me involved and of course he's an alumni from the University of Oklahoma. But he's my teammate so he would tell me about um, the year before when he went and how he you know, would like for me to go into 10. He just said it would be a good experience. I had never been to Africa and that was something I would like to experience and then actually you know, going there and seeing how it really is compared to what you see on television is a big difference. And this year it was a total of about 10 NFL players. Um, you had myself, Santonio Holmes, Roy Williams, Adrian Peterson, Tommy Harrison, like two other rookies, Larry Fitzgerald, it was a few of us. Did they know who you were and what you were there to do? Or, I mean, how did, how do you introduce yourself? Um, they knew that we were American football players. But I think the kids were just excited that people would come to help from the United States because like, we gave our shirts and mortgages and snacks and stuff to some schools and they were just so appreciative and I just feel like their respect level is a little different over there. Like they, they still have like tradition and they just have a, a lot more respect. You can tell that they respect their elders a lot more and there's no back talking. There's a little more discipline to me. The, the women over there, you know, they're carrying laundry in the head with a baby tied to the back, still carrying other stuff and they were cooking. I just felt like they did a lot like over there and they were very that's the run a definition to me of being an independent woman how did you communicate with like the kids and, and the local people like the language barriers or slang or um, even cultural differences actually in Uganda a lot of them speak English so that was that was the easy part for us now when you're in Rwanda a lot of them speak French but you still always had a few people that would be able to translate you know what we were trying to say and actually when it came to the hearing aid part that was probably the hardest part because you had some people who never spoke before and that grew up that were deaf so trying to under, try to get them to tell us if they can hear what we're saying you know was a little hard and you know we would take like our hand and put it under the throat and be like bop 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 because that was something basic that they can hear and we felt like they could repeat and some of them were repeating it back to us, like we were letting them know to speak, to let, you, let us know if you hear what we're saying. And some of my thing was just so shy at the time, uh, just being able to hear for the first time, that's just different. And then um, some got up and was excited and it was all type of different reactions just for being able to just let them have the opportunity to hear. You had to go through a lot, you know what I mean? We had to take about 10 shots, because it's my first time really going, taking malaria pills, things like that. So it was a lot of work going into it. Every morning you had to get up and put on your um, insect repellent, spray off, put on your sunblock and all that. It was like, became a whole routine. You had to sleep with a net over the bed to protect you from mosquitoes and all type of insects. It was pretty different. <laughs> we were just put in some situations where <laughs> you just probably weren't as comfortable as you're used to being home. So it kind of made you you know, really just realize how blessed you are to have the things you have and not take it for granted where some people will complain, but it's just like, you know, this is how some people are living and they have no problem with it. They're happy, they're fine. And we just had to make some adjustments. <laughs>